Blacksmith's Gully, as this place we are is known, is renowned for these quartz mullock heaps. And the mullock heaps, of course, are the uh, actual um, uh, load, if you like, that the gold was in. So what they had to do was extract their gold that was close to the surface. This is an old broken down conglomerate area. Um, and if you look at some of this quartz closely, you can tell it's conglomerate because there's two things that tell you that you're in a in a auriferous conglomerate mullock area is on one side of a lot of the quartz which is very smooth and rounded because it's been volcanically active and it's been rubbing on the surface of the earth for ages, millions of years. You've got this brown mud which is actually adhered or um, embossed on the surface of the quartz. The brown suggests that it was mud. The other ingredient is the same type of quartz but it has a red embossed mud on it which suggests it's lava. Lava found its way to the lower parts of the ground. In the lower parts of the ground was moisture, whether it was in the form of steam, whether it was in the form of um, vapour, who knows. But, but the moisture made its way to the lower parts, the, the lava flowed to the lower parts, and in the lower parts, the gold being heavy, that's where it was found and finally situated, in the lower parts. So the old miners were looking for the depressions in this uh, conglomerate where the mud was, along with your, with your lava, and they used to concentrate very hard on those areas. The speed that we scan uh, with our metal detector varies. Now I've worked with lots of people and some of the, some of the uh, speeds they use are fast, some are slow, and it just comes down to how you uh, decipher the signal that's coming to your ear. If, that's, if it's too fast, then you're going to miss it. So you have to go at a speed that suits your own. So it's a very personal thing, the speed you scan at. Because from what I've seen over 26 years, is there's a lot of very successful gold prospectors around who both go slow and who both go fast. It's very much an individual decision. And the decision you make is what works best for you. Me? I like it slow. I find that if, you, if I go too fast, it's the little sneaky little things that you hear. Oh, hang on. And I find sometimes that they're the only bits left in some of these well-worked mullock heaps. Because the goodies have gone. But once again, you can always, always guarantee yourself a little bit of gold to take home if you spend your time methodically doing the mullock heaps. You'll get yourself something. Well that wasn't very good but there's a lot of miles, there's probably four kilometres of this blacksmith gully to try so I'm not too concerned about finding nothing yet. Oh, I was going to show you this before, before we go. I'm going to show you this. This is the old Garrett detector. Between 1969 and 1994, you're either a Garrett man or you're a white man. I was a Garrett man. They were imported from the US, and they are the, probably the, the first detectors on the market that were actually usable. They were co-planter coils and uh, VLFTR, which meant um, uh, they could differentiate between trash and what we call treasure, which is ferrous rusting and non-rusting metals. But they are old dinosaurs compared to what we've got to use today. In these areas here where we've been working amongst the quartz, that is normally very quiet ground. And these old girls weren't too bad for, for that kind of ground. They didn't used to work up. But once you got them off onto the red undug dirt, they used to play up something terrible and so we couldn't use them. So now, we've built up the knowledge over the years and all of a sudden we were given that technology.